nurse for 38 years and I've never seen the NHS in the situations that it's in. So we have student nurses that come through and um, I have to say hand on heart, I'm not telling them what I'm really feeling about their future. What was your last shift like? Very, very busy. We had lots of quite poorly patients coming in. I work in an um, a urgent and unscheduled care area. Very busy, lots of patients, only you know a couple of nurses. Yeah. You're spread very thin across the ground. We've got a lot of international nurses that have come over to support us, which who, who are phenomenal. But they're now thinking that they can't afford um, to live down in the southeast. We're losing a lot of our international nurses going up north where the cost of living. Because with the NHS, you get paid the same salary wherever you work. So they're choosing to go up north rather than, than locally. So what's important is all these people here who work incredibly hard for um, the well-being and health of our country are being completely undermined and undervalued. And the government is failing to speak to these people and failing to understand that the very people that are keeping our country going and keeping us well are unable to feed their own families and heat their own houses and that is completely nonsensical to not take any notice of people and to have got to the point where they've got to stand outside the hospital and strike it's absolutely ridiculous and appalling to be fair <laughs> The nurses on the wards are so busy, there's not enough of them, and they go home every day without feeling that they've done their job properly because there's not enough nurses to do the job properly. I work in theatre, um, and obviously there's only one patient at a time in theatre, so that's quite good, but on the wards I know that it, it's terrible, and we're actually having to discharge patients from the theatre recovery because there's not enough beds. Um, and there's not enough nurses to look after them. There's not enough ITU nurses. Um, and people aren't coming into nursing and because they have to pay for, um, for, their, for their training, whereas there used to be a bursary, and the bursary's gone. So what are the staffing levels like in this, in this hospital? In this hospital, I don't think any ward on any shift is ever fully staffed. Um, we're always short-staffed. Um, but on top of being short-staffed, the demand of the staff is greater. So patients are sicker, there's more patients coming through the door. The pressure to see patients, to discharge patients, to create the capacity, because a &E is full, they've got nowhere to go, they're bursting at the seams, and that has a knock-on effect through the hospital. So we're trying to turn around so many more patients, and that puts increased pressure on the nursing staff, because often it falls to the nurses to organise lots of those discharge processes. You're not striking for yourselves, are you? No. I'm, I'm not striking for myself. No, I'm not. At all. No. At all. I'm, no. I'm doing it for uh, the future generations, yeah. Yeah. and for our nurses at currently in A&E, where we've yeah. got... Patients in corridors that I have I have never witnessed patients in no. corridors before. This year is the first time we've ever yeah. had it. Yeah. We've never seen patients in corridors. And when people are being asked to come in and do a corridor shift, you know, it, yeah. it's frightening. But you know, I, I cannot say enough though how much UHS is supporting it as a whole. You know, but our there are corridor shifts. Yeah. Because because there's too many patients and we can't get them corridor. out. Yeah. 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 You're, you're I've never seen this, never seen this. It's lovely to have the support of the public. Um, so I'm Paula and I'm really, really proud to be an emergency department nurse and I've worked um, in the hospital for 18 years. And I was just chatting to my colleagues and sharing that um, I feel really sad that after 18 years um, we've now reached a new low where we're holding blankets up in the corridors so people can use the, uh, the toilet facilities because we have no capacity in the department. We've had the hard, hardest winter that I've ever known in 18 years. Um, and all the staff are incredible and highly passionate and really driven to provide the best care. We're just not being given the opportunity to do that. And that's what breaks our hearts and that's why we're out here today. In Worthing, across the Trust, there are hundreds of people who could go home, but there simply isn't a safe place for them to go. So they're waiting for care packages, they're waiting for transfers. Again, it's poor planning, it's poor understanding of if you underfund social care, it has a knock-on effect into the National Health Service. 
So it's again, it's undervaluing what is most important in our society, which is caring for people, which is making sure they're well. And if you simply turn your back and close your eyes and you have an ageing population, you are going to run into these problems and you cannot keep working on the goodwill of, a, of people because they will burn out themselves. So yeah, it's entirely mismanaged and poorly thought through and letting us all down. Since 2010, so what are we talking, 13 years, we've seen the National Health Service being underfunded and we've seen uh, staffing levels decrease and we've seen morale and stuff go down. And this is really just a culmination of poor decisions by the government and a lack of understanding of how to value staff and how to run a healthcare system. And they have actually created this. This is entirely the government's own doing. And these people here are burnt out and at the end of their tether, they want to care for people, they want to do their job, but if they can't feed their families, if they can't heat their own houses, if they are working to the point of exhaustion, that's simply not feasible. So we need to sit down and talk. The government needs to sit down and talk and find a way forward. They've had 13 years of neglect and mismanagement. It has to stop now. So to national politicians, I would say you will get nowhere without sitting down and talking to people. So silence from government is intolerable and unacceptable you have to sit down and talk to the unions you have to understand people's lives and where they're coming from and you have to find pragmatic solutions and it is difficult it's not easy but that's why you are elected in order to take these decisions so act responsibly sit down and talk to people and for our local mps make sure that you're in touch with people whose lives you represent and make sure that you are representing them fairly and not simply sitting in westminster with your ears closed <laughs>